In this tutorial, I will show you how to add video references or video backgrounds into Blender. And I will also show you how to add the video reference into the camera's view if you'd like to do that as well. And using video references can be very helpful when you're doing animation, and they can also be very helpful for doing things like visual effects. And the video that I'm using is this free video from Pixabay of this cartoon character walking. So if you'd like to use the same video that I'm using, I'll have a link in the description, or you can use whatever video reference you want to use. And for demonstration in this video, I'm going to be using this basic rigged 3D character, and I created two different tutorials on how to create this character. So the first tutorial is how to model the character, and the second tutorial is how to rig the character. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, again, link is in the description. So so to add in a reference video, what you can do is you can just drag and drop the video from your file browser into Blender. And when I do that, you can see that the reference image is pointed right at us. And if I press the space bar to play the timeline, it's going to play the video. Now another way to add in the video reference is to press Shift A, and you're going to go right down here to Empty, and then you can add an image empty. Now if you click right over here to go to the Object Data Properties, you can open up the image or video right here. And then you can just locate to where you've saved the video and you can just select the video and then you can click on open image. And then just for now, I'm going to select these objects and hide them just to get them out of the way. So there is the video reference that we've added. Now the video's frame rate is going to play by the frame rate of the Blender file. So if I just click right over here to go to the output properties, you can see there is the frame rate of the Blender scene and 24 frames per second is the default in Blender. And that is very standard when you're doing 3D animation. And this video here that I downloaded from Pixabay is also 24 frames per second, so it is playing at the correct speed. If you want to change this though, you can click on the frame rate and you could turn this up. So maybe you have a video which is 60 frames per second or 30 or something like that, you could change this. Although this is going to change the speed of the animation as well. So if you want to animate a character or something in 24 frames per second, then I would recommend keeping this at 24 frames per second and I would instead convert your video frame rate. So I like to use a program called Handbrake to convert video frame rates, and I know there also are many other programs to converting video frame rates. So to move the reference around, you can just select it just like any other object. And I can also press G to grab, and S to scale, and R to rotate, just like any other object in Blender. And then if I wanted to clear the object's transform, I could press Alt-R to clear the rotations, Alt-G to clear the transforms, and then Alt Alt S to clear the scale. So I'm just going to press Alt H and that is going to unhide the character here that I hid. And then I'm just going to select the reference. I'll press S to scale. And then I want to rotate it sideways so that I could use it as a reference to animate the character. So I'm going to press R to rotate. I'm going to hit X to rotate it on the X axis. And then I can type in 9, 0, and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees. So now let's go over some of the reference video settings. So if you click on the video reference, you can go right here to the object data properties. Now the depth value right here is going to determine what objects you can see in the front or the back of the reference. So if you have the depth set to default, it's just going to act like any other object in Blender. So you can see this object, then the reference, and then this character in the back. If you set the depth to front, the reference is going to be in front of all of the objects. If you change this to a back, then the reference is going to be behind all the objects. It doesn't matter where the reference is, it'll always appear as though it's behind the objects. Now there is also the show in orthographic and perspective. Now if you look right up here on the top corner, you can see right now it says user perspective. So we are in the perspective view. If I however press the 5 on the numpad, that is going to go into the orthographic view. You can see right up here in the corner it says user orthographic. And also if I press the 1 on the numpad, 3 on the numpad, or 7 on the numpad to go front view, side view, and top view, that is going to go into the orthographic perspective. So what I usually like to do is I like to turn off the perspective but leave the orthographic turned on. And this way when I'm looking around in the 3D space I can't see the reference. Now I can only see the reference if I am looking on the front orthographic view. And then there also is this opacity value. So this can be very useful if you want to see through the reference. So if you want the reference
reference to be very transparent and you want to only be able to see it a little bit, you could just turn the opacity way down and now it's much less visible. Now if I close the empty settings, we also have these image settings right here. Now the frames option right here is going to tell Blender how many frames you want to use. So right now it's just set at 100, but I can click on this button right here. This is like two arrows going in a circle and this is going to reset the frames. So when I click on that, now you can see the frames is set to 504. And that is because this video has 504 frames. So if you want to be able to see the entire animation, you can just click on this button right here. That's going to reset the frames and it's going to use all the frames in the video. Now the start frame is going to tell Blender when it's going to start the video. So if you don't want the video to start until it hits a specific value, then you can turn up the start frame. Or if I wanted the reference to start sooner than frame one, I could turn the end frame to like negative 50. So now when I play it, the character is already walking. And then you can also change the offset and that is simply going to change the offset of where the video is. Now when the video gets to the end of its frames, it's going to stop. But if you want the video to loop after it hits the end frame, then you can check mark the cyclic value. So when I check mark that, now when I play this, when it gets to the end of frame 504, you can see the video is just going to jump back to the starting and so it will continue to loop. So once you place the reference video where you want it, you may want to make the reference video so it is not selectable. And that way when you're animating or selecting different objects, you don't accidentally select it and move it. So how you do that is you just select the reference video and then right up here on the outliner, you can click on this little arrow button right here. And this is going to disable selecting the reference video. And if for some reason you don't see this option right here, it may be because you need to click right up here to go to the toggles and then just click on this one right here to turn on the selectable. And then also once you're done animating, you might want to hide the reference. You can just click on this little eyeball icon right here and that way you won't be able to see the reference from the view. Now you may want to add the reference video into the camera's perspective and this can be especially helpful when you're doing visual effects. I'm going to press shift A. I'm just going to go right here and add a camera. Now to add the reference video into the camera, just make sure you are in the camera's view by pressing the zero on the numpad and then you can just drag and drop the video from your your file browser into the camera. Now another way to do this is by clicking right here on the object data properties with the camera selected and you can check mark the background images. When you check mark background images I can now click on add image and then I can choose either a movie clip or an image and they actually will both work. I'm just going to keep this at image but you could also use movie clip and then I'm going to click on open and then you can just navigate to your video and just select it and that's going to add it in. Now you can see because I set this as as an image, the frames are set to one, but I can just click on this button right here again, and this is going to set the frames of the video. And then just like we talked about earlier in this video, you have all of these different settings right here. So you can click on this button right here if you want the video to loop. You can also change the opacity if you don't want to be able to see it very well. And you also have some other settings right here to change the view of the video. And so you can now use your video reference to help you with whatever you're creating, whether you're animating a character or doing some visual effects or something like that. So that's the tutorial. That is how you add video references into Blender. And if you'd like to watch my tutorial on how to add reference images into Blender, then I have a separate video on that. I'll have the link in the description and a card right up there on the screen. And if you enjoy these videos and you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. But I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.